As a teacher educator, um, my job is to create, um, I work primarily in the secondary mathematics education program, so my job is to create future high school mathematics teachers. And so for Senate Bill 1, I'll specifically be integrating in the new Common Core Standards and then the new, um, well not the new, but the characteristics of highly effective teaching and learning, and then the concepts and theory behind assessment for learning. And we've already begun to do that this past fall in our teacher education courses at UK, especially in our secondary education program. All of the, my students had to utilize and become very familiar with the Common Core Standards. We've even deconstructed some of the standards according to the assessment for learning framework. They've also been exposed to the different parts of assessment for learning, especially the formative assessment and then analyzing assessment data and how that could change their instructional practice in the classrooms. And um, this semester, they're actually implementing as student teachers the unit plans that they created based off of the new Common Core Standards. You know, I think that uh, the focus on putting out uh, a consistent framework, and even though we've had consistent frameworks in the past, taking a look at the new standards that are coming out, the new language that's in the standards, I think is uh, something that's very exciting for me as a professor, as a teacher, um, because it relates to what we want our students to be focusing on in the, in the classroom as we're with them and also in their future professional practice. And I think that it extends them in really great ways. It takes them to thinking about critical thinking for themselves and really expanding and being specific about what their future students are going to be doing. So in my professional practice as a professor, uh, I think that that's a really exciting thing. And as we get to work with other arts and sciences faculty as well, we get to be a, a very specific in our language with them so that they know that what we're talking about and they know what they need to be highlighting in their classes for our, our students or our teacher candidates. Um, so I, I think it's a really exciting thing. I think it's going to be successful. It was interesting today as we talked about assessment for learning. I thought about the class that I teach every summer. I teach classroom management to teachers. And uh, we talk some in that class about assessment practices, but I really had not thought about my own assessment practices in that class. And I think um, thinking in terms of assessment for learning is going to change the way I assess students in that class. I think it's helping me analyze um, my instructional practice and how I teach the pre-service teachers. I think it's going to make it clearer because now we're looking at standards and how to deconstruct the standards. And I just went through this last week with uh, a group of my secondary teachers concerning can they really articulate what they are teaching, what they really expect those students to do and how they're going to know it. And I think the, the materials that are being offered uh, to particularly teacher education programs will help us develop better teachers. I think they'll go out there really knowing what they are to do. And I do hope this helps with the college career readiness because that's what we hear from the arts and science faculty uh, that is needed, especially in the literacy. My biggest concern right now are the, um, the juniors and seniors, especially the seniors who will be working in the schools next year, either as student teachers or as first year teachers. And uh, so what we have done and probably need to do even more is prepare for the transition into the new K-TIP. Uh, therefore, um, we've already introduced the language of the new standards and uh, need to do even more and uh, have some requirements. Uh, so lesson plans now should be reflecting the new standards and, and units and other things should be reflecting the new standards. Uh, so that's what we've done thus far. Um, in terms of the big picture, we of course will requ all, all requirements that involve standards and, and selection of uh, curriculum uh, will, it, will uh, have, and have to some extent and will need to um, uh, include much more use of, of the new standards and, um, and, and the assessment process too. 
the way that I see Senate Bill 1 and its stipulations is an opportunity to explain to our publics and to our students, uh, well, our reasons for being. Uh, so when the Senate Bill discusses things like formative assessment as central to what we do in public education, that's an important shift for us. When we begin to talk about things like the characteristics of highly effective teaching and learning as a matter of research-based knowledge for why we do what we do in classrooms and in higher education, that's a profound change. Um, we don't do these things because we believe in them or that we feel that they're important. We now have an opportunity to begin talking about what we know and why we do what we do. So, for example, I can begin to talk with my students about how to accommodate the needs of every child that enters their classroom in a systematic way that uses a research base and not just wisdom of practice and tradition. Um, one of the things, for example, with formative assessment I talk about is the idea of creating a positive learning curve as a matter of design. If you have uh, half of your students failing on a given assessment after a lesson, something's going terribly wrong. But using Senate Bill 1 stipulations for formative assessment, I can help my students think about and conceive of how to sequence each learning task so that by the time the students get to their assessments at the end of a unit, they will perform and demonstrate their knowledge as a matter of course and be successful. That's a real difference and we can become systematic about how we do that in schools and as a result everybody wins. The profession becomes stronger and is equipped to explain itself to the public and the bottom line is our students in the K-12 context do better and achieve at much higher levels. It will mean that we are going to be very intentional in our teaching of pre-service teachers to help them be able to meet the Kentucky core academic standards and so it will involve us in looking at the standards, deconstructing them, and then implementing some of the practices in our own cl classrooms on campus in order for them to better understand them and also see better ways to implement them themselves when they become teachers. And it will also just help us to collaborate among our faculty in various disciplines as well.